Antarctica, a vast frozen continent at the bottom of the Earth, home to 90% of the planet's freshwater ice. It seems distant, isolated, even untouchable. But what would happen if all of Antarctica melted? The answer, it would reshape the world as we know it. Let's start with the numbers. Antarctica holds enough ice to raise global sea levels by about 58 meters. That's roughly 190 feet. It's hard to visualize, so here's a comparison. New York City, gone. London, underwater. Entire island nations, erased. Coastlines would retreat inland by tens or even hundreds of kilometers. Around 1.6 billion people, nearly a fifth of humanity, live near current sea levels and would be displaced. The United States would lose most of Florida, parts of Louisiana, Texas, and even the eastern seaboard. Bangladesh, one of the world's most densely populated countries, would face almost total submersion. Cities like Shanghai, Mumbai, Lagos, and Jakarta would be swallowed by the ocean. The world's geography would never be the same. But let's be realistic. Antarctica won't melt overnight. Melting the east and west Antarctic ice sheets would take centuries to millennia, even under worst-case warming scenarios. Still, human-caused climate change is accelerating ice loss faster than models once predicted. In the past few decades, Antarctica has already lost over 2,700 billion tons of ice. The most vulnerable part is West Antarctica. Much of it sits on land below sea level, and warm ocean currents are already melting it from underneath. This process is destabilizing massive glaciers like Thwaites, sometimes called the Doomsday Glacier. If Thwaites collapses, and many scientists think it will eventually, it could trigger a domino effect, destabilizing nearby glaciers and adding neaters to sea level rise. This leads us into the concept of climate tipping points. Melting Antarctica isn't just a symptom, it's a trigger. Once certain thresholds are passed, ice sheet loss becomes self-sustaining. Warmer oceans lead to more melting. Less ice means less sunlight is reflected, which leads to even more warming. It's a feedback loop, and we're already inside it. The effects go beyond flooding. A world with drastically higher sea levels means mass migration on an unprecedented scale. Collapse of agricultural regions due to saltwater intrusion. Economic turmoil as ports, trade hubs, and megacities vanish and potentially even geopolitical conflict over shrinking land and resources. This isn't just an environmental issue, it's a global humanitarian crisis waiting to unfold. Let's not forget Antarctica itself. Melting wouldn't just destroy ice, it would transform ecosystems. Penguins, krill, seals, and unique microbial life depend on the stability of the ice. If the ice disappears, entire food chains could collapse, and with them, global ocean systems like the thermohaline circulation, which regulates Earth's climate. You might be wondering, has this ever happened before? The answer is yes, but not with humans around. During the Pliocene epoch, around three million years ago, temperatures were only two to three Celsius warmer than today. Back then, sea levels were 15 to 25 meters higher, and parts of Antarctica had forests instead of ice. We are dangerously close to crossing those thresholds again, and much faster than nature ever did. The good news? This future is not inevitable. What happens next depends on the decisions we make now. Cutting greenhouse gas emissions, switching to renewables, and enforcing global climate agreements like the Paris Accord can slow Antarctic melt. We may not be able to stop all of it, but we can prevent the worst case scenarios. Antarctica may feel far away, but its fate is deeply connected to ours. If we let it melt, the cost won't just be measured in meters of water. It will be measured in lives, lost cities, and a world forever changed. The ice is melting. The clock is ticking. What will we do next?